Last year, I went to my first ever convention, SummerCon, which was an absolute blast. I got to meet Troy Baker, Tara Strong, Gray Delisle, and Greg Sipes, along with Greg Baldwin and Alessandro Giuliani when I was getting gifts for friends. I had a lot of fun that year, so when some of the guests started getting announced for 2024, I was hyped. Off the bat, Ron Perlman being there was enough to make me want to go so I can get Slade's signature on my Teen Titans box set, but as the months went on and more people were being announced, the more the list of people I recognized and wanted to meet grew, until eventually I had 11 people I wanted to meet. And I did just that. This video is just going to be me talking about the experience this year and what it was like meeting these people. Why? Because I feel like it. Fuck you. <laughs> So like I said, there ended up being 11 people that I wanted to meet this year, and my initial schedule was to knock out the five members of the DCAU Justice League and get my box set of the original show, as well as my Blu-ray disc set of Unlimited signed by all of them. This did not go as planned, because I could not find them. <laughs> I learned from last year and knew that the voice actors were in their own building, but when I went there I could find a lot of anime voice actors and some people that I wanted to meet, but not the Justice League. Turns out they were in one building that they were calling the Star Wars Hall this year, why they called it that, I have no idea, because there were only like a few Star Wars actors there and a small corner of the building dedicated to this team that builds R2-D2s, but then I feel like a majority of the people in that building were just regular voice actors. This was the building that had Winnie the Pooh, Mickey the Mouse, and Butch Hartman. Which, yes, Butch Hartman was there to promote his new show, and it was just as cringe as you'd think it would be. He was the one and only guest on the list that I saw and only thought, e yikes. But I wouldn't know this information for about the first two to three hours of the day. So in that time span, I had done some wandering around the showplex, looking at different booths and merchandise, before eventually heading back to the anime voice actors and getting in line for Erica Harlicker, aka Kurapika. The fact Kurapika was here was fucking mind-baffling to me. I never thought in a million years I'd get to meet the voice of my boy, and Erica was so fucking cool. It was a lot of fun just watching her interact with the fans. It, it kind of gave me Michaela Jill Murphy vibes from last year. Context to that, I went to last year's SummerCon having not seen Avatar at all. So when I was in line for Grey Delisle, I had seen this woman next to her going all in on the character she had played. Some little girl, I guess. I, I didn't really recognize her, but I respected how much the actress was into the role and, you know, for the fans and shit. And then when I eventually watched Avatar and got to Toph and looked up the voice actress, I recognized Michaela as that super ecstatic woman probably shouting, I am Melon Lord to all of Top fans. And like I said, Erica gave that same vibe. Anytime I was in that building and looked over at her boo, she'd be filled with so much energy and giving her all to every fan that she interacted with and it was just so wholesome to see. And getting to meet her was so fucking cool. I, I got to show her my little Karapika pins I have on my keychain and tell her that I really love the character. I got my Karapika poster signed as well as a video of her doing the voice. Hello Alex, this is Karapika Kurta. And one is on for Jonas. When I went to get the videos, I initially was going to record her like I did for Alessandro, but then she offered to record them herself so then the audio would be more clear and I think the videos just came out better that way. I thought that was really cool. It was also after meeting Erica that I started thinking about getting a Hunter Hunter tattoo and came up with the idea of getting Karapika's chains going around my arm but that'll be a very late game one to get. But yeah, Erica was dope. After realizing that it had been two hours and I only met one person, I decided to get some signatures from Michael Dorn because his line was really short and I still had no idea where the Justice League was. Michael was cool but it was the weakest interaction I had out of all of them. And I don't mind it, he was someone I initially had on the Sunday if I feel like it list, but like I said, his line was short so I just went for it. I got him to sign my new Vegas poster, which given how he voices Marcus in that game, it's very ironic that the poster is an NCR soldier, but hey, it was either this or my copy of the game and I thought the poster was a better idea. And then I also printed out this dope ass fan art of Frank Horgan from Fallout 2 made by Jan Esther Husen and was able to get him to sign it. The signature's a little iffy because he was having a hell of a time trying to write it. I don't know if his pen was fucking up or if it was just the quality of the paper, but it's still cool. Disclaimer, I'm a fake Fallout 2 fan because I've never actually gotten past the opening dungeon, but I've watched a lot of videos of Frank Horgan and fucking love that man's voice and think he's such a dope ass character that when I found out that dude who's gonna be there for a Star Trek character he played was also the voice of Frank fucking Horrigan, his name went on my list immediately. So yeah, the interaction went me saying absolutely nothing because I didn't know what to say until he finished signing the poster and the photo and said something like, here you go, and I got to hear his actual voice for the first time. It is nothing like Frank Horrigan and it made me just stand there and go, you have such a wonderful voice. <laughs> But yeah, he was chill. 
even though I kind of have a feeling that he probably forgot about Fallout 2 in New Vegas and what roles he even played, but that's fine. It's not like I'm a massive fan of the guy I know his entire filmography. I just wanted Marcus and Frank's signature. Eventually, I did find out about the Justice League being in the Star Wars Hall and finally got to meet them. Well, at least some of them. First one I met was Susan Eisenberg, aka Wonder Woman. She was cool and I got a photo with her because it was part of a combo deal and made things a little cheaper. I didn't really have anything to say to her, but I did tell her that the show made me appreciate and like Wonder Woman a lot more than I initially did. Not to say I never liked Wonder Woman, she was just a character that existed for me. But the way she was portrayed in the animated series and of course the way Susan played the character made me really like the character a lot more, which seemed to make her happy. After her was Phil Lamar, voice of Jon Stewart, who I got to tell him that it was the show and his performance that made Jon my definitive Green Lantern, as well as show off my hot girl GL tattoo that I got specifically for this convention and showing it off to the voice actors of those two characters. He thought it was cool. He also spoke in Jon's voice, which was also cool. But while I was in line for Phil, Mariah Canals Barrera, the voice of Hot Girl, had gone for lunch and wouldn't be back until around 3.30, and George Newbern, Superman, still hadn't shown up to the con yet. So I went back to the anime building to get my Assassination Classroom poster signed by Sonny Strait, the voice of Koro Sensei in the English dub. Yes, I'm a filthy degenerate and watch that show in the dub. Like everyone else, Sonny was cool. His booth had a bunch of artwork based on his characters that I guess he drew himself, which was pretty fucking cool. He liked my poster and I got to go reviewer mode and tell him pretty much exactly what I told Jonas when I was first watching the show. That I love his voice as Koro Sensei and that Sonny has such great comedic timing and delivery. That he knows what words to accent in a sentence to make the line so funny to me. Of course, actually saying that to him was a lot rougher than me writing it, but I got the main point across. He also told me that the great thing about Koro Sensei for a voice actor is that he doesn't have lip flaps. And that honestly makes a ton of sense. There was also this moment while he was signing my poster that another voice actor, I don't know who, just came up to him with a box of Goku Reese's Puffs going, I found one, and then left. <laughs> After Sonny and some more walking around the place, it was around 3.30, so I went back to the Star Wars Hall and Maria was back with, like, one person in line. So I got to just walk right up and pay for the autographs I wanted. I got to tell Maria how I grew up watching Wizards of Waverly Place and then in my 20s was when I watched Justice League and Hawkgirl ended up being my favorite character in the entire show and I had no idea she was her. <laughs> I then showed her my tattoo and this is where she ends up being so much more goaded than Phil Lamar because she said it was really cute and then asked me if she could take a photo of it. When I got my tattoo so I could show it to Phil Maria, I was expecting like a, oh, that's cool. Not for Maria to take a photo of it. And sure as fucking hell did not expect her to post said photo onto her Instagram stories to make it a highlight. This is insane. <laughs> Child me watching Wizards of Waverly Place never thought in a million fucking years that he would become a DC head and get a hot girl Green Lantern tattoo that would then end up on the mom's camera roll and her fucking Instagram. So yeah, I didn't get a photo with Hot Girl, but she took a photo of my tattoo and put it on Instagram, and that is dope as fuck. After that insane experience, I stood in George's line for a little bit before I decided that I was done for the day. At that point, there was about two and a half hours left of the con. George was running late because I guess he got caught up in traffic at the airport, and I had managed to meet six people. I was gonna go with a friend the next day and was needing more reasons to go on Sunday with the rate I was at, so I just decided to push George to another day and head home. Day two started off strong with my friend and I heading off to Amelie's booth. Amelie being there was not something I was expecting in the damn slightest, but I must have manifested it when I told Jonas I wish he would be there after he told me Sayu was going to be there. Ama was so cool and pretty much how you'd expect her to be based off of the streams. Well, with a lot less toad. <laughs> Watching this short after I got home that day was something else. <laughs> I had this joke planned about how I was here to scuff this place up or that she can't escape the scuff because I was wearing my I'm a PC shirt that I got from a trip to Microsoft years ago and I completely forgot about it until she wrote the word scuff on what I was getting signed. <laughs> I got a photo with her which she was one of the three people that I went into the con wanting to get a photo with. This is also one of the rare times that I actually like a photo of me which is kind of funny given how I overheard her tell someone that she takes great selfies. Can confirm that. <laughs> And I also got to tell her at the end of our interaction about how I related to Metamorphosis, a monster you made, to YouTube and hate comments, and how it personally hit home for me. She even asked me what I make, and I told her that for the last three years it's been reviewing media. She gave me some advice when it comes to hate comments, pretty much being sometimes you just gotta ignore the comment sections. That she knows it sucks because you want to be that YouTuber that reads and responds to all the comments, but sometimes you just can't. And given how that was the decision I had to make literally right at the beginning of the year, 
that hit. <laughs> but speaking of reciting something, I didn't bring anything specific. I wish I had a CD of Rise of the Monarch for her to sign, but unfortunately I don't. And she did have a CD for sale at her booth, but it was her Naruto cover album, which I'll be real, I thought that was kind of weird. Like, why did you choose the Naruto cover album over your debut original album? I don't know, but I did find something at her booth that I knew immediately would have to get signed. That being the tech support print. And the fact that I had two empty speech bubbles meant that I knew I'd have to get Sayu to sign the other one. So I had my friend pull up the tech support while the plane is leaving the runway short, paused on the Discord messages to have her write down some of hers. She did not write down some of her messages. She wrote down all of them, including the ooh woo, and then added a hee 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 and scuff detected, which is just goaded. I did not expect her to write the ooh woo part. <laughs> But what's even more goaded was that now that I had this print, which only had half of it written out, that meant, of course, I had to go get the other half, which meant I was now going to meet Sayu, which I didn't even have planned, to be honest. Nothing against him, I just didn't have anything to say or get signed until I got this print. But the thing with Sayu was that in order to get a quote with your autograph, it was $20 per six words. My friend and I knew that we would have to paraphrase his Discord messages because there's no way you can put all of this into a speech bubble. So I thought of the sentence, the plane's about to take off. A perfect six word sentence. I got up to him, made a tech support joke, told him that I was getting the autograph and a quote, and that I wanted, the plane's about to take off. I don't know if it's just me, but this looks a lot more like six words. <laughs> Yeah, Sayu just blatantly ignored my request and instead wrote all, all of this off the top of his head, and that is goaded, and I love him for it. I will say, this print is the most unoriginal thing I have ever gotten a celebrity to sign from one of these cons, and I do not care. The joke is worth it, and the fact that Sayu wrote what should have cost me 40 plus dollars, even though I only paid for six words, is amazing and makes the print so much better. I hope I don't sound like I'm complaining, because I'm not. I appreciate this a lot. Sayu, if you're somehow watching this, thank you. Also, it's... <laughs> it's really funny watching Sayu's SummerCon recap video and him talking about how his VTuber is more popular than his actual name. Because... <laughs> Because despite seeing his IMDb credits say Sayu in a music video, and despite the VTuber model being on the photo, I had no idea this man was Sayu until Jonas explicitly told me it was Sayu. So fuck me, I guess. Uh, anyway. After that amazing experience, my friend and I went to get some food and then headed off to the gaming area that the con was holding this year. Our original plan was to have my friend show off his Beat Saber skills, but they didn't have any of the VR gear set up, so that sucked. Instead, we walked around him looking for any sign of VR gear or Beat Saber and me stopping off at stands and buying shit. I also saw a guy playing a Spider-Man game on the PS5 and he was playing as Miles, which made me think they had Spider-Man 2 there. And as badly as I wanted to play it then and there, I also don't want my first experience of that game to be like half an hour of gameplay that I can't save or ever go back to. I'd rather just wait until I get my hands on the game so I can dump as many hours into it. After coming to the conclusion that Beat Saber must have been a specific day thing and the rock band that was set up required you to sign up to play, we decided to leave the area and go back to meeting people. I thought about meeting Ron Perlman, but his line at this point had its overflow in like three rows of that. So we went back to the Star Wars Hall and got in line for D. Bradley Baker as well as saw this fucking atrocity. <laughs> D was another one of those Sunday, if I feel like it guests that I originally had scheduled, but after day one I realized you can't schedule this shit, and I already went through the effort of printing out a screenshot from an Avatar episode, so I was gonna get it signed. That screenshot was originally gonna be this photo that I keep seeing whenever I Google Appa, but then I realized it's edited and the original frame isn't as funny, so I chose a different frame from the same episode, which works a lot better to be honest. Nightmares and Daydreams was an absolute trip when I first saw it and immediately became my favorite episode of the entire show the moment Appa started talking, and next thing I knew he's wearing a samurai uniform and fighting Momo, and nobody in the show is acknowledging it. 10 out of 10. Just like everyone else, D was cool. I got to tell him that Nightmare and Daydreams was my favorite episode, to which he laughed and told me a lot of people would probably say the same. I also got to say that I lost it the moment it cut to Appa in the samurai outfit, and then finding out that when Appa and Momo were speaking English, that still D voicing them was really cool. D did both the English speaking voices for the characters, which was cool. And then I got to ask him a last minute question I had, which was if he's ever worked with Frank Welker, because I find D to be the second coming of Frank. He said of course, and then mentioned that both of them come from Colorado, which I had no idea to be honest. That's pretty cool. 
by then, I finally saw George Newburn as a boo, so we went up to him, and this man is such a fucking gentleman. I walked up going, hi, I'm here to get two autographs like I did with the rest of the league and pretty much everyone else I had met, and this man just entirely ignored that and asked me what my name was with his hand out ready to shake mine, and then after I told him my name and shook his hand, he turned around and did the exact same thing to my friend. When I was busy paying for autographs, he had taken out the photo from my unlimited disc set and then realized that I had gotten everyone else to sign the outside of my case because, quite honestly, I had no idea how to get the photo out and it always seemed like it'd be a nightmare to put it back in. Something that I told him, to which he showed me how to take it out and put it back in. My friend also went, so, Superman and Sephiroth, huh? To which George laughed and went, I know, right? Two different kinds of people. It was just so fucking cool to see this man be so nice to someone that wasn't even buying anything. And the fact that he immediately went for the introduction and handshake made me realize why this man played Superman. Because that entire interaction just screamed Superman to me. He even asked me if yellow marker was okay before signing the box set. Like, fuck, what a gentleman. After that, I decided I had done enough for day two and had three people left to meet and could probably knock him out the next day. So my friend and I left. I knew that day three was gonna start immediately with me getting in line for Ron Perlman. I didn't expect to have gotten there before the con even opened, but I managed to get into the first row of the overflow line for Ron, where I had to stand there for about an hour, hour and a half, because he was running late. And due to being late, he was gonna do the remaining photo ops before being at his booth. At one point, I realized that Ron would probably be cash only, which he was, and had to pull out another $200 from an ATM. My original plan was to get the Teen Titans box set, New Vegas poster, and my copies of Hellboy 1 and 2 signed, along with a photo because my dad wanted to see the height difference between us after finding out Ron's not as tall as he thought he was. But when I got close enough to see his prices, realized I wasn't going to be able to afford all that, along with the other signatures I wanted. So I just had to settle for the poster and box set, which is honestly fine by me. The Hellboy DVDs were a maybe anyways, actually a maybe if I feel like it on Sunday, not knowing Sunday would be the day I get to meet the guy. And I'm more of a fan of Teen Titans and Fallout than I am of Hellboy anyways. Ron was a similar experience to Michael Doran where not much was said. He signed my box set, which if there's anything I'm a bit bothered about from this con, it's that he signed over Starfire, which means now if I ever meet Hinden Walsh, that's gonna be an awkward placement. But it's whatever. And then he asked me what franchise my poster was. I said New Vegas, and he goes, Fallout? And I said yes. Then he signed it. I told him that out of all of his roles, I loved Slade the most, and he said nothing to that. <laughs> Then I got my picture, shook his hand, told him it was nice meeting him, and left. I could take offense to all this, but I really don't care. The photos at his booth was either Sons of Anarchy or Hellboy, and then one photo of Beauty and the Beast, which I thought was funny and would have loved to get for my dad, but again, didn't have the funds. Like, he was probably just there for Sons of Anarchy and Hellboy, and then here comes me with Teen Titans and Fallout New Vegas. Ron was still a nice dude, and it was cool getting to see him. And also last year when I got Tara and Greg to sign my box set, I had said that all that I needed left was Hinden, Carrie, Scott, and Ron, but when the fuck would I ever get to meet Ron? I guess apparently the following year. <laughs> After Ron, I had two more people to meet. Michael Rosenbaum, the voice of The Flash, and Tyler Hoechlin, who played Superman and Superman and Lois. I needed two signatures for Michael, which would cost me $120, and I was pretty much meeting Tyler for a selfie and a possible hug if I can get one. An autograph would have been cool, but I didn't have anything specific for him to sign, but could probably get something from his stand if there was anything good enough. Looking at his prices, he had an autograph selfie combo going for $120. Both Michael and Tyler were cash only as well, and the amount of cash I had on me after Ron was... $120. I mentioned that I pulled out $200 from an ATM earlier that day because you can only pull out $300 per day, which meant I could only get another $100, giving me $220 and not enough for an autograph from Tyler. I was fine with that. Well, while I was waiting in line for an ATM was when I decided to recount my cash and found a secret 20 hiding in there, which meant after my ATM visit, I would end up having the full $240 I needed, which made me stupid hyped. While in line for the ATM, the Smallville and Michael Rosenbaum photo ops were happening, so by the time I got the money, his booth was empty. So it was off into the line for Tyler, which obviously was overflowing, and I ended up getting in the second row for that. There ended up being about three rows for the overflow while I was in line, which makes sense given how he was only showing up on Sunday, and there were a lot of Teen Wolf fans. And also Superman fans, but I think the Teen Wolf ones outnumbered us. Now, I like Superman and Lois and love Tyler Hoechlin as Superman, but even more as Clark Kent, specifically as a dad. 
If you would ask me who my Superman was, it would have probably been Tyler, but I wouldn't have a definitive answer given DCAU and my adventures with Superman being what got me into the character, and also I think Henry Cavill deserves someone who actually fucking understands the character like he does. But after this con, and after this interaction, Tyler became my definitive Superman. Because I got to tell him what I just told you, that I loved him as Superman, but even more as Clark as a dad. I even brought up the scene with Jordan's laser vision on the football field and Jordan getting the kryptonite taken out of him as amazing scenes of Superman being a dad and just totally gushing about him and how wholesome they were to which Tyler, with such a big smile on his face, seemed so excited to hear me say that and even told me that he thought the football field scene would be a really underrated Superman moment. And then when I went to get the selfie with him, I asked him the question I had been meaning to ask him the moment I found out he'd been at the con. Could I get a hug? Because I just wanted a hug for my favorite Clark Kent. The Clark that's so insanely wholesome. The Clark that's such an amazing dad. The Clark that just looks so damn huggable. And Tyler's response was, of course. We took the selfie where it was like a sideways hug. And honestly, I thought that was going to be the best I'd get. And I was fine with that. But then after getting my phone back, he puts out his arms and was ready for an actual hug. To which I pretty much just dove right into his arms, burying my face somewhere in his chest because his man's eight inches taller than me. And it was amazing. <laughs> no shit, I genuinely feel like an eight-year-old with how goddamn giddy that hug makes me. Tyler is the most huggable man of all time, and that whole experience really did feel like meeting Clark slash Superman. He was such an energetic and wholesome guy, and again, I got my hug. <laughs> Maria taking a photo of my tattoo was peak until this hug. I cannot explain to you just how fucking happy that hug made me. I rode that high for several hours. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I did find a photo of him as Superman that looked pretty cool and got autographed, but, you know, the hug was peak. <laughs> and then finally, I had the last person to meet and the last signatures to get. And it was a really underwhelming way to end off the people meeting section, because Michael's line was pretty quick, and I got the stuff signed without really saying much, because what was I supposed to say? Hey, I never watched Smallville, and I didn't know you played The Flash until you were announced for this con. I just know you from clips of your podcast. <laughs> but seriously, Michael was cool. Really chill, and from some of the interactions with other fans that I saw, he seemed really cool. I wish I would have had more to say to him, but hey, at least he voiced the best version of Flash. And I don't mean that as, oh, the DCAU version. No, I mean he voiced Wally West, the best Flash. Don't at me. And here is what my box set looks like with all the signatures, as well as the unlimited disc set. And yes, I will always be sad that I'll never have Kevin's signature. And that's pretty much it for the people. I met everyone I wanted to meet, got all the signatures I wanted. The only ones missing that I could have maybe got had I felt like it was Darren Norris, who was there for Cosmo. And I had no idea he voiced Cosmo, but I knew him as the news anchor guy from iZombie that I don't remember what happened to him. And then I found out after the con that he voiced J. Jonah Jameson in Spectacular Spider-Man. You know, the one with the Hitler stash. <laughs> There was also Ashley Eckstein, the voice of Ahsoka, who I could have gotten to sign my badge, but I just kind of forgot about it. And lastly, there was the cast for Hell of a Boss, which meant Brandon Rogers was there. I had initially thought of meeting him just so I could tell him about the time in my first year of high school that I watched A Day with Mom in Spanish class, and my teacher saw the opening scene and thought I was watching and refused to hear any other side. Didn't matter that I told her what the video was, or that my friend told her what the video was, or even some random kid I had literally never even talked to tried telling her what the video was. She was adamant that I was watching and emailed my mom about it. To which my mom didn't care because I have enough self-awareness to not fucking do that. And I also showed both my parents the entire A Day With Mom video and they thought it was funny. <laughs> Anyways, I decided not to tell Brandon any of that because I quite honestly have no idea if he would find it funny. I want to say he would, but that's based off of a version of him from eight years ago. And I honestly don't know what he's like today because I haven't watched him since high school. I thought about getting the thumbnail for A Day With Mom printed and signed by him, but couldn't find one that wasn't two pixels and just thought it wasn't really worth it. So instead, I ended up just getting to see him from a distance and seeing him IRL instead of on screen was surreal as fuck. And then my friend, who's a proud cheapskate, was taking photos of him, one of which has him looking in our direction and he does not look happy. <laughs> Brandon, if you're somehow watching this, I hope you enjoyed that story and I'm sorry on my friend's behalf. <laughs> But that's about it for this video. I thought about showing out the stuff I bought there, but I feel like that would make more sense for the 1K special when I go through and show off my background. 
Anyways, I didn't write a ending to this video, and I don't really know how to end it. This was just my experience at SummerCon 2024, and I look forward to going there next year, and the next year, and the next year, and the next year. <laughs>